Is Microsoft Editor the right grammar checker for you? And how does it compare to other grammar checkers on the market? Hi there, my name is Brian Collins and welcome to the Become a Writer Today channel. So in this video, I'm gonna walk through exactly what Microsoft Editor can do. I'm gonna talk about why you may potentially want to use it and compare it to some of the other tools that are out there. Hope you enjoy the content in this video. If you do, hit thumbs up. And if you wanna get more videos like this or about other writing tools, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. If you're not familiar with Microsoft Editor, it's a new grammar checker that was released by Microsoft in 2020. I say new because a lot of the other grammar checkers on the market have been around for years. Now you can't buy Microsoft Editor uh, by itself. You have to take out a subscription for Microsoft Office 365 and then you can download it for Chrome, for Edge, and also it integrates with your writing apps or at least the Microsoft writing apps like Word, Outlook, and so on. So if you're gonna buy Microsoft Office 365, you're gonna pay $99 for the year if you're in the United States. So rather than buying a grammar checker, you're actually buying access to all of these apps. And Microsoft Editor is something that's built into these apps. That said, there is a browser plugin that you can use as well if you're working on documents outside of the Microsoft Office 365 suite. And that brings me to the key reason why you may potentially want to use Microsoft Editor. If you're working in a company that already uses Microsoft Office 365, then you have access to the editor, so something that you can use to check your work for free. If, on the other hand, you don't have a grammar checker yet, and you don't feel like you need Microsoft Office 365, then you may not necessarily want to pay $99 for what Microsoft Editor can do. Now let's go over to uh, Microsoft Word, and I'm gonna show you Microsoft Editor in action. To use Microsoft Editor, you just simply use your Microsoft Office 365 app as normal. So I'm on a Mac and I've downloaded Microsoft Word for my Mac, and I'm going to paste in an article into Microsoft Word. Now when I paste in the article, you'll see the traditional underlines uh, of grammar and spelling mistakes that the Word Grammar Checker provides. But you'll also notice on the top ribbon a new option called Editor, and this is Microsoft Editor. So when I click on this, it'll check for spelling, grammar, and writing issues. So it'll give my article a percentage. Um, could take a second for it to load. So this is giving me 95%. It said that there's one grammar mistake and two spelling mistakes. So I can click on these to see what they are. Um, and I can also click on these to see the grammar mistakes and decide whether I want to ignore or accept them. You'll notice a Microsoft editor that you can also click on settings. So the first thing to check is that you're on UK or US English, depending on what country you're on. There's also a number of additional checks that you can use. So you can set up a custom dictionary if you have words that you want to add to your custom dictionary. Uh, you can also choose whether you want to ignore words in uppercase, ignore words with numbers, to check spellings as you type, uh, always to suggest suggestions and so on. And you can also select this option to get readability statistics. So let's turn this one on and see what happens. Now I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna click on document stats. Um, it says it may take a few minutes depending on the length of my document. So now it has the word count, sentences per paragraph, and a flesh reading score. So a word count is useful if you're a freelance writer and you want to figure out if you fit your word count for your client. Uh, but the flesh reading score is actually what I like because if you're writing for the web, you want a relatively good flesh reading score and you want your grade level to be comparatively low so people can understand it. And that even applies if you're writing technical documentation or technical articles. So this article here looks like it has a relatively good flesh Kincaid grade level score. So I'll be relatively happy with this. Now, all of that said, my takeaway from these options is that it hasn't really done anything that different to what the standard or the old grammar checker and spelling checker in Word would do. So I wanted to compare it to a premium grammar checker that I rely on. To do that, I'm gonna open up Grammarly. I've opened up the Grammarly desktop client for Mac and I'm gonna paste in the exact same article. Grammarly will take a second to scan it and you can see that it's already caught lots more errors and lots more potential uh, copy edits that I could make compared to Microsoft Editor. Uh, to be honest, this is why I prefer Grammarly over Microsoft Editor. It's because of the AI-powered writing assistant. So I can use correctness to identify grammar mistakes, but I can also use clarity to figure out what sentences I want to rephrase. So in this case, it's suggesting that I move recently from here to here. I can accept this at a click. Here's another sentence that I could potentially rephrase. Uh, so it does seem to me that this would be a bit stronger if I moved keep reading from the end of the sentence to here. So Microsoft Editor isn't really doing any of this for me, and this strikes me as something that's a gap. So it's only capturing um, basic spelling and grammar errors, even though it has been branded as a grammar checker. 
Now Grammarly has a document statistics section, much like Microsoft Editor. So you can see here that it says the readability score is uh, 69 and this will be readable by somebody aged 13 to 14. So that's kind of on par with what the Microsoft Editor is saying when it gives it a Flesh Kincaid grade level of 9.4. So to show you this in context, you can see that that score will correspond to the 8th or ninth grade level. So it looks like the insights from both tools are relatively accurate. The next feature of Microsoft Editor that I wanted to check is its ability to check for similarity to online sources. In other words, plagiarized content. So to do this, I'm going to paste in an article I've written for a new project about NFTs or non-fungible tokens. And Microsoft Editor will take a second. It's giving me a score of 85%. So I'm going to click on similarity and see what it presents me with. It'll take just a second to scan the document. So I've waited about 40 seconds and it still hasn't presented me with any information, which is a little bit frustrating, but perhaps there's nothing wrong with the document. So let's compare this to Grammarly. So I'm going to open up Grammarly, paste in the same article uh, and click plagiarism. And Grammarly uh, almost instantly finds where I published this article online. So 100% of this text matches where I published the article. Now I use the plagiarism checker in these tools for vetting uh, articles by new freelance writers and to make sure I haven't inadvertently self-plagiarized or perhaps uh, used information from somebody else without pro properly attributing it online. And similarly, if you're writing essays, you can benefit from these plagiarism checkers. But I was a bit surprised to see that this didn't work. So I'm gonna click try again. Um, like now nothing is happening. So let's go over to the web app and see if I can get it working there. So I have opened the Microsoft uh, Word web app, which is probably one of the advantages of Microsoft Office 365 that you can access your documents from anywhere. Um, and that is worth pointing out that you're getting more than just a grammar checker if you do take out a subscription. Uh, anyway, I'm gonna paste in my uh, article um, into the web app. And uh, so it's giving me a score almost instantly. So it actually seems to be a little bit faster than the desktop app. Uh, so it's giving me a 68% score. So out of interest, let's go back to this and see what this says. This is 82%. Okay, I'm not sure what the reason for the differences are. Uh, anyway, let's click on see editor suggestions. Um, so if I go down to check similarity for online sources. Again, it takes. It seems to be taking a few minutes to scan the document. Uh, but while it does scan the document, I was interested to see that the insights on the web app were much more uh, powerful than the insights on the desktop app. So for context, this has 19 spelling mistakes, 15 grammar mistakes, clarity, conciseness, formality, and so on. All of the refinements and reports I'd expect from a good grammar checker. Um, whereas if I go back to this, it doesn't seem to have identified the same level of issues. 23 spelling mistakes, eight grammar mistakes. Um, so that's a bit strange. It would, it would su suggest to me that the algorithm Underpinning Microsoft Editor is probably, or probably updates quicker on the web app versus the desktop app. So let's keep working with the web app instead to compare it to some of the other tools that are out there. So I'm gonna go back to similarity and it's saying 71% is similar to text on other online sources. So let's click on that. So it has actually sourced uh, the article that I've published online. So that's, go that's good. That suggests to me that the uh, plagiarism tool within Microsoft Editor is relatively reliable. Um, so now let's review some of the spelling mistakes. Um, so this is actually correct. Uh, this is, is a spelling mistake. So I would change that. So you can see here how you could use Microsoft Editor. You just go through your document um, and decide what to accept or reject. Um, now, unlike Grammarly, you can't accept all of your changes at once. So if I go over to the Grammarly document, I'm going to turn off plagiarism. Uh, there is an option to accept multiple changes at once when you paste in a document, and that's not possible with Microsoft uh, Editor. Uh, anyway, so I'm going to go to grammar mistakes. Um, and again, I can go through these, decide whether I want to ignore or accept them. and keep working my way through the document. Um, if I look at some of the other options in the article, uh, it has some vocabulary improvements. Um, it has some conciseness improvements. So I do like some of the reports that are inside uh, Microsoft Editor, at least on the web app versus the desktop app. Now that we figured out that the web app is actually a bit more accurate and reliable than the desktop app for Microsoft Editor, let's paste in the coffee article from a few minutes ago and see what comes up. Uh, so I'll paste it in my coffee article. I'm gonna click on the editor tab. It's giving me a score of 86% um, with two grammar mistakes and no spelling mistakes. Uh, so the person who wrote this article has actually done a pretty good job. Um, now let's go back to Grammarly and paste in the same article. So I'm just gonna overwrite this. 
Uh, this is actually giving me 12 grammar mistakes and a number of uh, sentence improvements that I can make to the article. So you can see here, I can accept these at a click. So Grammarly doesn't really have this, um, or Microsoft Editor doesn't really have the same level of insights as Grammarly. Uh, it does have some voc vocabulary improvements. Um, I said that there's no issues with plagiarism for this article. In terms of accuracy, Microsoft Editor did catch a few issues in the article. Uh, however, there was one red flag for me. So there is a grammar mistake halfway down through the article. Here's one guide to get you started. This should actually be you and not your. So this is a grammar mistake here. Uh, so Microsoft Editor has missed this in the desktop version for Word. Now, if I go over to the web version, let's see, has it caught it? Um, unfortunately, no, it hasn't caught it in the web version uh, either, although it has caught some other issues. Now I'm gonna go over to Grammarly, and if I scroll down, you can see that Grammarly has caught this grammar mistake. So while Microsoft Editor is reasonably accurate, it's not gonna catch everything. That said, there is a big caveat to all of these tools. Uh, there, no grammar checker is 100% accurate 100% of the time. As the writer, I'd always recommend that you ask yourself what you're trying to communicate. Uh, who your audience is and what the style guide is for the publication in question. Sometimes you need to make a, the best call and not just simply rely on software. And when you know the grammar rules, you can, of course, break them. Um, and I also always recommend using a proofreader for longer works like a book chapter. However, the test article for this review is only 800 words long or 700 words long. So I would use a grammar checker for something like this and then be happy to publish it. Um, so you can see this is my workflow for using grammar checkers like Grammarly or Microsoft Editor or whatever the tool is. Of course, one of the key advantages of all the premium grammar checkers out there, whether it's Grammarly or Pro Writing Aid, and now Microsoft Editor, is that they have plugins for your browser. So I've installed the Chrome plugin for Microsoft Editor, and I'm going to paste in the same coffee article. Um, so if for some reason you want to work in Google Docs or somebody sent you something in Google Docs, uh, you can still go ahead and edit the article with Microsoft Editor. Uh, if you have your Office 365 subscription. Uh, now that said, they do say it's in beta. Um, I do recommend you make sure you select the right English for whatever region you're writing your article for. Uh, and then you can go ahead and check the article as normal. So it doesn't seem to present a sidebar uh, like the Grammarly or Pro Writing Aid uh, plugins. Instead, it just simply gives me a pop-up where I can decide whether I want to accept or reject the changes. Um, I also don't see an option for plagiarism. Um, although that said, they did say it's in beta, so perhaps that will be uh, rolled out at some point. Um, so this is kind of similar to the traditional word sp uh, spelling checker that you would get. My key takeaway from using Microsoft Editor as a grammar and plagiarism and spelling checker is that it's relatively good, but it's not quite as accurate or reliable as other grammar checkers like Grammarly or even Pro Writing Aid. Um, if you have a Microsoft Office 365 subscription Anyway, or you already use Microsoft Office 365 uh, through work, then you have access to Microsoft Editor for free. That's probably the key advantage. If on the other hand, you're looking to buy a grammar checker uh, specifically for checking your articles uh, for improvements and for checking for plagiarism, then you may be better served by buying a dedicated grammar checker unless you really want to get into the suite of Microsoft Office 365. So I hope you enjoyed the content in this video. If you do hit thumbs up and if you've got questions about grammar checkers, let me know in the comments section below. And finally, if you wanna get more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe to the channel.